Hello, Bezel Triple Three. I wonder how many of you remember the movie that Bill Murray was in called Groundhog Day. I'm reliving the same day over and over. Now, the reason I bring that up is because I've come to the conclusion that Joel Osteen has really only one sermon. He just says it a lot of different ways. He says two things. You need to rise higher or go to that next level, and then he gives you many, many different techniques to do that, to rise higher. There's also a lot of repetition in his broadcast, certain elements that he does exactly the same way over and over again. It is kind of like Groundhog's Day. I like to start with something funny and... I like to start with something funny and I like to start with something funny and I like to start with something funny. Now he always starts off with a funny joke to kind of loosen the crowd up, I guess, just like a late night talk show host. All right, hold up your Bible, say it like you mean it. And now he's going to have people hold up their Bibles and uh, begin the mantra that he does every single broadcast as well. Today I will be taught the Word of God. Now, it's interesting that part of his mantra says, today I will be taught the Word of God, which is really puzzling to me because he really never refers to the Word of God except to take a couple obscure passages, in this case, uh, out of the book of Proverbs that last no more than about 25 seconds out of the entire time he's speaking. What really should be held up is his book, uh, How to Become a Better You. I want to talk to you today about taking steps to grow. I want to talk to you today. I want to talk to you today. I want to talk to you today. Now, I want you to think about what he says every time he begins his uh, quote-unquote sermon. He says, I want to talk to you today about dot, dot, dot. Uh, today, it's about growth, right? But it's Joel speaking to you about Joel's opinions and Joel's stories and Joel's experiences and a lot of other stories he's going to tell about people who did whatever he's talking about. In this case, uh, growing, you know, examples of, of people growing. But nowhere do you find him opening up God's word, which he said he was going to do, right? Today I'm going to be taught the word of God. And actually exposit, be that representative of God's holy word, allowing God to speak to his congregation. As a little child, we grow automatically. We get bigger, we develop physically. Early on, growth is automatic. It's just a part of our life. And just in case you came in late and don't know who is speaking, uh, Joel's going to remind you of his name and, and how you can get in touch with him. I read where the number one magazine in America, the best-selling, most read magazine, is TV Guide. And I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I said at the beginning that there was only about 25 seconds worth of uh, using the Bible to help his teaching today. I, I was wrong. It's about 40 seconds, so here it is. You do your best each day and you're going to get noticed. That's what it says in Proverbs 22, 29. Do you see a person skilled in their work? They will stand before great men, not obscure people. That's saying, if you will be diligent to develop the gifts that God's given you and be your best every day, then promotion is coming No, If you outperform them, if you outgrow them, if you know more than them, God says your gifts will make room for you. And that is as good as it gets for biblical exposition in this particular broadcast. Trust me, I watched this all the way through two times and I'm giving you exactly what was presented in the way of biblical references. And just to, you know, remind you about something, has the name of Jesus been mentioned in this broadcast? I can tell you from my watching it twice up to this point and we're about halfway through, not once has Jesus' name ever been mentioned. I'm doing as good as everybody else in my department. No, you're not supposed to be like everybody else. That thinking will limit you. That'll convince you to just settle where you are so productive, so filled with wisdom and insight that when you're not at work, people say, man, I can't wait till they get back. This office is practically falling apart. Oh, and just in case you forgot again who's preaching, uh, the name comes up again. What are you doing to improve so you can go to the next level? To have good mentors. Find people that have been where you're trying to go. People that know more than you and let them mentor you. When you're around them, ask questions. Pick their brain. Find out how they got to where they are and how they think. And I say this respectfully, but don't waste your valuable time with people that are not adding anything to your growth. Life is too short to hang around 
People with little dreams, little goals. People that are not going anywhere. Okay, so not only is Joel not preaching from Scripture as a pastor should be doing, allowing God to speak through his word, but he's actually teaching something that's unbiblical. Um, in Romans 12, we read, Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Is Joel actually saying that if someone that you come across, perhaps in the, the church that you attend, has nothing to offer you, has nothing to further your own personal growth, and don't spend any time with them, don't waste your time with them, instead of being that conduit of grace and of mercy towards other people, to be able to be a, um, a tool in God's hands, to, to love one another as, as Jesus tells us to do, that just blows my mind. And then you've got people clapping for that. He took him under his wing, and every day that roommate taught him a new word. Taught him how to say it. Taught him how to pronounce it. He would make his friend use it back to him in a sentence. You have seeds of greatness on the inside, just waiting to take root and flourish. I'm a God. I'm not the God. And that is Joel's teaching, even though it's cloaked under kinder, gentler teaching. Uh, he says it in his book, You have the DNA of Almighty God. Listen, you, there is no part of you or me that is divine. We are children of God through faith in Jesus Christ, and the only reason we're connected to God at all in a saving relationship is in and through Jesus Christ, who, by the way, up until now, and we're almost done with the sermon, has not been mentioned once. You'll rise higher and higher, and I believe and declare you'll see every dream, every desire God's put in your heart, you'll see that come to fulfillment. Amen. Do you receive it today? 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 And there we have it. The end of the sermon. Hey, where's the beef? Boy, and that's my question. Where's the beef? You know, where's where's the solid meat of, of biblical interpretation? Where's Christ and Him crucified? Where is the law that condemns and the gospel that saves? Do you realize that in this entire broadcast, Joel did not mention Jesus and His saving work at all? He talked about our growth. It was all self-centered. The old Latin used to be the incurvitas. Everything centered back in upon ourselves as we gaze upon our navel and wonder, what's God going to do for me today? You see, we don't live in order that God can give us everything we want and need to, to keep us happy. We live to glorify God, to serve God, to love God because of what he's done for those that trust in Jesus Christ. This is what needs to be preached. And this, sadly, is what people that go to Joel's church and listen to Joel's broadcast are not not getting. They're getting, uh, they're thinking they're getting bread and they're really getting a stone. Well, we never like to close our broadcast without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And uh, just like Groundhog Day, over and over again with every broadcast, we have Joel at the end inviting us to um, accept Jesus into our heart. The, the thing is, if I was a non-believer and I was listening to this, there are many of them that go to his church and listen on the uh, broadcast. I would be wondering, what does Jesus have to do with anything he just talked about? He never mentioned him once. Um, what's the benefit of asking Jesus into my heart? That would be a really good question. And, and I, I want to just implore you, if you don't know who Jesus is, go to the Gospels and read about him through the, the medium that God chose, through paper and ink, and, and actually when it's preached correctly, through the very mouth of the preacher, God speaks to us. And you can find out about Jesus who lived in human history, who died the death that you should die, who lived a perfect life, and that life can be imputed to you so that God sees you as though you have kept the law in every way, and therefore God can remain just, and he can also be merciful to you by accepting you as his own, having the righteousness of Christ draped around you like a robe, and the penalty for sin, which is death, having already been paid through the death of Christ on the cross. Trust in Jesus today.